Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 2-3-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 53. And so today, we're going to be uh, working on hovering. So the hover aspect of the Etch-A-Sketch Project, um, bullet number three. It says, set up a hover effect so that the grid divs change color when you mouse over them, leaving a pixelated trail through the grid like a pen would. Hint, hovering is what happens when your mouse enters a div and ends when your mouse leaves it. You can set up event listeners for either of those events as a starting point. There are multiple ways to change the colors for the divs, including <laughs> adding a new class to the div, changing the div's background using JavaScript. So that is our task for today, and that is what uh, I completed. Uh, I want to start off by, okay, so I'm going to caveat and say my code, my code base is a little messy right now, and part of that is on purpose, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Um, so I didn't take any screenshots today, so that's part of it. Uh, I left it on the, on, in the code base, but commented it out. So, first I want to take you to the, um, the CSS, because... One of the things that I did, did immediately is I commented out this grid gap because I didn't like it. Um, when I think of a traditional Etch-a-Sketch or Sketchpad application, um, I think of, and I could be wrong, but me personally, I think of each grid as being, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> being butt up against each other, meaning there's no space in between. So I didn't really feel necessary to have a gap in there. Again, the grid gap was in there from the from yes from our video yesterday, and it was something that I got off Stack Overflow, um, just as a probably whoever put the requirement in there for their for their question had had either a had gap or wanted gap in there. So basically, I commented out because I, I didn't want any gap. So now we jump over to this JavaScript. Today's uh, video shouldn't be very long, by the way. It's just going to be explaining things. So the first thing I did before I even hit this, uh, pardon me, um, is I uh, did my pseudocode on paper. So I kind of did what, I kind of wrote down a little bit of this, I, but in addition to, I kind of put down my ideas of what I wanted to do. Um, again, it's important to do your pseudocode before you write actual code. That way, you kind of have an idea where you're going, you're not just kind of aimlessly putting code on the page. So the idea was, um, I won't read my pseudocode because, you know, it's on purpose kind of messy on the paper. <laughs> but essentially what I was trying to do is I wanted to make this a function. And so what I'll do and um, is we'll go through this and I'll show you what I had and I backed out of it. So this is all the same. This part is all the same from yesterday. The only thing I did is I commented out the square dot inner text, which I kind of told you I was going to do yesterday anyway. I just haven't removed it yet and didn't remove the comment just yet. So the uh, text labeling is now gone. And what I did before is um, none of this was here uh, yet. And I had... I create a function and I called it here outside of the for loop but inside the make rows called fill squares and I created a function called fill squares and I had um, created a variable called square filled and this idea of this was to create a function that would that I could drive drive the uh, filling of the squares on the hover and just use that you know piece of the logic and call it from out from you know from inside the uh, other function out to this function kind of like we did on the last project um, similar concept so I had square filled uh, equals document dot query selector all grid items and the idea of this what I thought this was gonna do and this is a good learning lesson because I feel like I've said this before in other videos I learn best by doing, not really so much by reading reference material, and this was a, a lesson learned in DOM manipulation. So what I thought this was going to do is it was going to, since all this for loop had already been ran, 
I thought that this would already be in RAM or ROM, if you will, in the browser, and that the browser would remember that it already done, uh, it already created grid item, and oh, you know, thirty, thirty, what is it, thirty-two times, and that the that node not array that node list would still be in memory and I could access it down here so that that's what I was trying to do here with square filled and I did square filled dot add event listener so this is where I wanted to um, use the I googled this to get this so mouse over so this is adding an event listener that when the mouse rolls over that that div that that square it's gonna fill it and that's going to be right here. Square field dot style dot background color equals black, um, and then council log square field so that I could see in the council real time, you know what that value was. Make sure it's working right. This function does not work. Um, it is broke. Um, I'm not even sure it would have ever worked because. I think I was using this improperly. So again, now going full circle. What I thought this was going to do was query select all the current grid items, all whatever, uh, 32 of them, um, and let me manipulate all of them since I did a query selector all. But what this, I, I won't run it because it's all, um, this all commented out and it's not actually functioning right now but what I did what happened I should have took a screenshot but I didn't so what ended up happening when I ran this code after I debugged it and got all the semicolons in the correct spots uh, is it would only print out the first div the first grid item and none of the other you know 31 <laughs> so that that showed me there and that console.log showed me that div but it only showed me that one div and I was like that's weird so I went into the DOM and looked around and sure sure enough I only had one div so it literally erased and forgot all this for loop up here that it did and it literally just it it created a square filled one one div <laughs> the very first one and then it moused over worked. So the mouse over part worked. I moused over it, it went black. It filled the filled the box black. But that's it. And then it just stopped. So I was like, okay, well, let me let me uh let me see if I can put this function inside of this function. And I started doing that and I stopped. Just for a simple fact that I'm trying to get better at being verbose like I've always been, but at the same time adding in clean code and adding in less code so if that makes sense trying to be verbose but verbose in all the right ways and so what what I mean by that is so when I started putting the fill square function here it got to be a lot of code and it seemed very unnecessary um, because literally I didn't have to do the call here anymore uh, since I was inside the function and now it knows that it can access and it sees the uh, grid items node list so all I really needed really was this this event listener mouse over to function and then a console.log to you know check the results that's it three lines of code and I was trying to make a function out of it which was minimally going to be four to five lines of code if not more so actually it may, didn't make a lot of sense at all other than I'd have another function that was you know broken out by itself basically but it would be a nested function inside of uh, inside of uh, make rows if that makes sense so it really didn't make a lot of sense to do that so I went a different approach and that's what you see here so yesterday we stopped right here and then we had a council.log, I believe. Um, and then what I did was I added on the listener. So I got rid of the squared filled variable, just kind of trash that, just commented it out. And so we have square dot add event listener, mouse over, and then um, with an empty parameter function and with the arrow function. And inside of that is running 
square dot style dot background color equals black, which that's your hover color. And so, and then we're council dot logging the square. So, and the square isn't a value, it's just going to print out the div. So I can see that the divs are firing correctly and that the data inside the divs and the attributes are correct. Um, and you'll see that in a second. And so really, it's it's actually quite simple. So it's just adding that mouse over listener. And then when it sees, when it's triggered and the mouse over comes, comes into play, it will color it black and leave it black and move on. Um, I also left this in here, not just for a talking point for you guys, but also because... I may come back to this and I want to remember that I kind of what I did and how my thought process because we aren't we aren't done with this project yet and if I need to if I have a need to make a new function I have a start basically because I had it deleted and I undid it to bring it back because I was like well there's no sense in deleting this because I may actually use it so uh, I'm going to leave it messy and leave it in here for now uh, comment it out and then at the end of the project on the last video of this series uh, if I don't use it I'll clean it up and show you guys the final result um, without it in there and that's the same thing with the while this is you know remnants of the first videos stuff that I went away from I'm just kinda keeping all this again it's just work in progress right now um, I'll clean it up and refactor it all at the end so <clears throat> and so here's your make rows call so we're calling it, we're giving it row 16 and column 16. So it goes up here, does the exact same stuff we had yesterday. I, I uh, uh, went ahead and commented out those three console logs. So we don't need those because we know that runs fine. And that runs through the four that we talked about yesterday, the for loop. And then the addition is just the small little section here. And let's see what that does. Down here. I'll just refresh it. So it, it it works pretty good. So I gotta go a little slower with my mouse because if I go real fast it'll skip. But um, I think just by timing buffer probably I sourced up. But yeah, see it it works. Um, it does exactly what uh, I envision a, a old etch a sketch would do. Not too familiar with Sketchpad, what they say in the text, but I am familiar with etch a sketch, and this is what that would do. So I'm not sure we're going to be doing anything with responsiveness because you, you do notice like see if I shrink it there uh, the boxes change size I like the squareness here I could probably change the CSS to make it um, keep that um, dimension if you will or that sizing because if, if you see now that I expand it uh, it becomes more of a rectangle instead of a box but I'm not too finicky with that at this point um, maybe I'll do that at the end as part of a polishing touch, but yeah, it works real well and these refresh and that's it. And then in case you're wondering the Googling I did, this is where I can't ended up on MDM, MDN, excuse me, to, uh, get that event listener mouse over. So I use this basically, but instead of using event.target, I used my, um, my, what we've been using the background color attribute instead uh, this does work however I got a strange um, again <laughs> I don't know I this project I've been plagued with um, with uh, uh, not error messages but warnings of deprecation so <laughs> um, this kid did give me a deprecation message so I took it out and put uh, put this in there per how what we've learned in um, top and uh, this works just fine as you can see there's there um, actually I didn't show you so if I show you the dev tools if it loads cool uh, granted it might be a little small to see on your screen um, but you see how it's printing out the bottom there the the div class grid item style background color black it's just repeating itself if you look real close on the far right hand scroll you see it getting smaller smaller and smaller it's just writing this over and over and over so it doesn't look like it's doing anything but it is um, and so um, that's what that's doing that line of code because if I obviously if I don't need it now so if I save this and comment that out it won't do it anymore refresh yep see so it's not writing anything on anymore. 
since I know that this works and it's giving me the result I want. But yeah, um, but yeah, if it asks to make it responsive, I'll look at it then. I think it's just kind of kind of funky. I think it's doing the the sizing, the box sizing based on the screen size, which I do think there's a section in here that talks about that. I did read ahead, but I didn't read ahead real carefully. But so next time we're going to be adding a button uh, that resets basically. Um, won't go into it now, but that's what we'll be working on in the next video. So that's it for now. Um, yeah. So didn't go through that too fast. I didn't do a lot today. It was, it was a I had a busy day at work and I've uh, been cranking out these uh, videos and doing really good, um, making a lot of good progress. So I figured I'd take a little bit easier today, and I am doing it one section at a time. So I figured this was a good place to stop to upload. I know there wasn't a lot of content tonight, but um, I hope you enjoyed the ride and uh, learned a little bit along the way with me today. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And um, as always, let me know in the comments uh, how you guys are doing on this project. So well, without further ado, until next time, see you.